afternoon everybody, my name's John, I'm a good old pal of Al's. I've been making these um, buildings for my sort of little layouts and townscapes for ages now. Love them. You might have seen my video on YouTube where I've just sort of spun the camera around the houses, Spielberg style -y. Very nice. Um, one of the things that a lot of people have asked where the, where the actual trains are, well in this case, they, they we'll come to that later. In the meantime, I've noticed, or well, Alice told me that, quite a few, there are, there's basically there's a right way and a wrong way to put these very simple structures together. I'm going to go through with you on a simple, on a new, on a new model, um, it's, it's a rail shed, here we are, we're looking at the beautiful jobby there, now this one is first principles, it's just chucked together on a bit of old um, cereal packet, you see, so it's very flat, but to be honest, stick that on the layout and a man on a fast horse isn't going to see the flaws. However, if you want to go to full Monty, what about this bad boy? Now look, in here we see all the relief. Can you see that? Pick that up on the windows and oh, all the relief here and up the top on the roofs there. There's even a bit of sort of muck uh, sort of sprinkled on there. The point is, these, this is two ways of making the same structure. Right? Now there is a difference. This one, if you follow my guidelines, will take you, which was where we'll start, will take you no more than a few minutes. Drying time aside, you have to wait for things to dry. I say it'll only take a few minutes, but never, ever rush any of this. Two reasons, the longer you take, which isn't going to be that long, the better results you'll get, and the more you'll enjoy it because you'll be achieving stuff. And these, these are wonderful. I really do like the product. Look at the way it's all weathered. And really, without much further ado, I think we're gonna move on and we're gonna look at this product. Okay, right, now, when you've printed out this one, this particular model comes in three printouts. One, that's obviously the roofs. It's worth um, taking a few minutes just to weigh up what's what. Now, with all these structures on owls, I've built them all, because um, I love them. Um, and th th there's a pretty much a standard approach to the way I deal with them all. Um, the first thing I do is have a good, you know, 10 minute look, work out which is which. Now, let's see, these are quite clearly the walls of the structure, yep. This is something else, well, what's that? Well, that's a bit thick, that's a bit, well, we're looking at the vents, aren't we? I haven't actually put the top of these vents yet, we'll do that later. See, it's quite clearly what's going on there. On this other one, that's the other wall. This is quite clear, can we see that? Is obviously the back and the front. So there we are. Now we've familiarised ourselves with the pieces. I think that's very important. When I first started doing these structures, I barrel in, straight in, really, I'll do this, and then I get, and then I go, well, actually, what's what here? Um, so it's very important to identify what's what, although very simple. Once we've done that, I'm going to simply chop them out. So we'll start off with this here, chop them out, like this. This is, remember, this is, I'm not going to be putting any relief on this at all, I'm just showing you how to do the basic construction of one of Al's wonderful buildings here. Get, it, get me um, scissors, chop it down to a manageable size. There's its flaps here, which we'll use. How about that? That's right, isn't it? Look at this, it's just an old bit of cereal packet. But if we're gonna try and build something like this, well, it's not going to stand up to much of a wind. I mean, the train would go past that and the loco would blow it away. So that's no good, is it, like that? We have to firm it up, and that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to get my glue, any old, um, you know, PVA-type glue, get the area on my cornflakes packet, or whatever it is, cereal box, don't really look. I've got loads of kids, so I don't ever run out of these. Beauty of this, of course is it's you're just recycling old stuff. Here we go. Make it so that it comes out. Round and round and round. I like to have a little stick. 
In, in your own time, eh? <laughs> I'm going to do this differently. Just take the top off, get a stick in there, shove it on my this. Oh, and I just even love this process, you know? Look at that. Setting it on, but you must do it all over. So it's really, really going to be nice and tactile. This sort of thing might happen if you're as clumsy as I am. Don't to worry too much about that. This sort of thing happens. Now remember what I said earlier. Do this, you can be nice and sort of gung-ho and um, expansive with it, but do it with love and care and attention. Each little bit of the transaction. It's not really a transaction, is it? I'll just use that word. This is a piece I cut out. On he goes. Like that. Now, he's stuck down nice and firmly. Don't make the mistake of trying to cut this out straight away. If you do that, you'll tear the paper. You now have to wait for it to dry. What I like to do is I like to get a couple of heavy tomes, such as this, shove them on top, and that will dry perfectly. Leave it for an hour or so. Meanwhile, you do the same with all the other pieces, okay? So you stick them all onto thin cereal packets, okay? Okay, now a good hour's passed. I've had myself another cup of coffee. Don't think you can really um, emphasise the importance of this. Don't start one of these tasks before six o'clock on a weekday, weekend day, before six o'clock in the evening without a cup of tea or coffee. It's foolish, foolish. Even more foolish after six o'clock in the evening not to start with a nice glass of wine or a nice bottle of beer or whatever's your fancy. Anyway, here we go. It's dried, it's dried perfectly, look at that. Now we need to chop it down. So here we go. Get yourself a nice ruler and a sharp blade. Don't use a blunt blade. Use a blunt blade, you'll cut yourself. You'll force the tool. Use a nice blunt, uh, no not blunt, a sharp knife and a straight edge. And we'll place it ever so gently along the edge of the shape. And with a nice gentle cut, one, two, and away. He goes over there. Turn it round, nice and gently, no rushing. Very nicely done. Oh, look at that. And now we're gonna start to see the thing take shape. This is a lovely building because I just, I do love the, um, the pointy archy bits and all the detail on the brickwork. And now we see how it's starting. Oh, I just love the whole process. But again, we've got to do it ever so, ever so gently. So it's one, two, to make sure. The, the tendency is to rush these things. The moment you start rushing it, you cut into the structure, you cut away from the structure. Not good. So let's do everything as if it's the only cut in the world. I've watched people make these things and every single time people muck it up because they rush. Here we go, we're cutting down the last thing. Oh, see, moved it. Push down hard on the ruler, lovely. That's come back this way, that's your flap. All done nicely. Go along the bottom of your structure. That's French for structure, it's not, I made that up. There we are, move it along. And hey presto, look at that baby. All ready to start construction. So you do that with all your pieces. So you chop out all these, stick them all down and chop them up nicely until what you end up with is, here's one I've prepared earlier. That's one side of your structure. Let's get rid of all these bits. I lean over, excuse me. There's a front and back end. You see, you can see it all taking shape. And then our roof sections. Let's do them in turn as they will appear on the building itself. And then our little fancy 
um, little vents that are going to go on the roof later. A lot, I've got some friends who have some very extensive layouts. Um, if I'm honest with you, they don't even bother with these. Little, anything that's a little appendage, they don't bother. I urge, why not? I think it just makes, gives it that extra touch, doesn't it? Okay, so now we're ready. We have all our pieces firmed up, cut out, and we're now ready to actually do the assembly. Okay? Okay, now, I'm now going to start assembling the building. So, I'm now going to start assembling the building. Now, make sure when you've chopped your sides out, make sure you don't chop the flaps off. The flaps are pretty important. Um, so, I'm going to start off with putting my... I cut this flap slightly wrong by attaching the front of my shed to this wall, which will mean putting it there, like so. So in order to do that, I'm gonna very gently score down my flap with my sharp knife, so I'm not chopping right the way through. I don't wanna chop the flap off. So I'm just scoring it, so gently, gently. When you're doing this, talk to yourself, but whisper. When you whisper, when you're doing something, you tend to do it much more gently. So I'm just going to score it down there like that. Oh, don't want to, don't, don't want to chop it off. I want to chop it off. Just a gently score. So that now he's going to fold nicely like that. So that's my little flap. Do you see? Very nice. Can you see that? Quite simply, I'm now going to take my little stick, put him in my glow, place some glue, right there, down the flap, -la 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 -la. place my front onto the, so there we go, do you see? It's on there, I'm now going to get two very useful tools, I don't want to really be standing here for the next six hours, do I? Like this, not six hours, but ten minutes. So I'll get a Pegums, Peg him that side, peg him there, job's a good one, see that? Just leave it, leave it, go on to the next one. We're going to now, with the other wall, I'm now going to, one, one very small, um, actually it's a, it's, a, it's a massive tip this, what you'll notice is that on both sides of my back and both sides of this wall I've got so that's not the inside of that's not the inside of a cornflakes packet so I've printed it out twice remember you only have to buy it if you buy it once you can print it out a hundred times so I print it out twice and stuck um, one of the walls on the inside because it's a it's a rail shed and you're gonna see inside aren't you so you don't want to see the inside of cornflakes packets there. You want to see the inside of a rail shed. Does that make sense? Figure that one out. Anyway, so here we are. He's drying nicely. I'm now going to do the same with this one, which means we're looking at the back. So I'm going to score this very, very nicely. You see? There, that's nice. And now I'm going to... See that? I'm going to glue this piece. So it's bit by bit. Don't rush any of this. It's bit by bit. In fact, this is a good example. On this one, I haven't... I haven't uh, glued a section of the, of the wall on the inside. So all you're getting is the inside of, a, of, a, of the cereal packet. Make sure you don't do that. So I'm sticking him on there, like that. Very nice. Same thing, hold him in. Make it nice. A couple of pegs. Peg away. So it holds firm your flap. Like this. And then you just wait for the two sections to dry. Okay? Okay, now I've let this dry for some considerable time. So it's ready to take the pegums off. One, two, and now, there we go, it's ready to go. 
that's ready to move on to the next stage and here's a little tip of mine the way we're going to put this together is like so attach the two pieces like so can you see that so we put the flaps together we stick the flaps together and we've got the square but it's all a bit whoa, 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 it's a bit like this so I like to, you know you can take this or leave it I've got a friend that does like to do this a friend that doesn't and just likes to get on I like to secure one wall and the back down like this so it's secure so how I'm going to do that is I'm going to draw a line in here on an old cool flakes packet yeah then we're going to get a nice right angle so what I do I've got a very good eye I get my set square on my protractor I'm going to use this because I can do this because I'm clever there we are and that shows you the line that we need to put our glue down onto okay so let's do that bit of glue here that way where it's like we're putting the thing in a vice almost ready oh this stupid thing workmen bad tools blames them okay yeah. that's what I was doing so I'm just gonna wipe my old glue down the edge here like that it's only sort of cheap glue this you can get it in any old shop you know the sort of thing PVA get from the pound shop it'll do the job it lasts for ages as well and you can do all sorts of things with it so there we are now I'm gonna put him there like that and then just leave him and he'll just sit there can you see that I'll go away make myself a nice cup of tea and when I come back he's gonna be nice and firm so when I get to stick my next piece around him I'll only have to worry about holding this piece but of course I will put some glue around the base of this side of the building so that will hold firm too and then you've got a nice strong structure for when you're going to put your roofs on which is another thing that's going to be really really easy okay okay I've as you can see I've put on the other wall on the other side using the same um, process I've just glued it to the to its base there um, flapped it flapped it up and used the old pegums again so now that's sort of ready but what you need to do again don't rush this don't rush it I can't emphasize that enough you do not want to rush any of these things leave your pegs on go away do something else I don't know, fiddle with your layout or paint some scenery or I have to say this one I'm doing here is one of the more complex structures it has six separate sections for its roof whereas for instance if you just do a house it's basically a square with that so it's the same procedure but I think I think what we're learning here is not to rush in okay and make establish a firm base for your, for your building I think that's very important when you're trying to put things together and it's mid-air and it's all over the place it's so fiddly and it's sort of settled to second best this is now solidifying into a proper strong structure very exciting okay okay now I'm going to move on to one of my extra special tips um, again a lot of you will know about uh, re-strengthening some of your structures you know it's about going the extra millimetre mile however far you want to sort of call it but what can happen is that the tops of your buildings might splay out a little so that your actual roof section here which fits perfectly on doesn't quite reach so I like to firm up the top of my structure bring it all in now the way I'm going to do this is cut a small piece of thicker card stronger card just get a bit of old mount board from your local framers or, or just a thicker cardboard um, I don't know but I've cut it to the width of the structure I've measured the structure it's exactly eight centimeters 
so you cut it exactly 8 centimetres long ok so it's the same width and I want it about 4 centimetres which gives me that you see it fits in there so you're strengthening up there it's like a rafter it's like you build an actual building think of this as an actual building not just a model it's an actual building give it love and care and attention so this is what I'm going to do just shove some more of me glue along the edges that are going to be in contact there we go like that then I'm going to stick him in there now you've got a choice you can either just hold this again I suggest you do this for an hour but you're not going to hold that for an hour are you so of course you're not I just get two weights I use, I've got jars full of old stones and full of, this one's full of old coins that I just collect. Stick one one side, where's my other one? Get this one the other side, and I think you'll find that's going to do the job just nicely. And if you leave that together, get it right in the middle so it does the job perfectly, you see? You leave that together and that will just do the job for you. Again, you, when, by the time you come back, that's as strong, as safe as houses. And seeing as it's buildings, your buildings, you want something that's just as safe as buildings. You repeat the trick. One, two, three. There we go. Now I've got my three stanchions, rafters, whatever you want to call them in place. And now I can confidently, I've even taken this one off its base. I wouldn't do that if I were you, yeah? But I've even managed to be able to do that. And because of these stanchions, it's really quite a solid structure. But I will reiterate, when you put your stanchions in, really do it with love and care and attention. That way you get this result. You can see how simple it's all been so far. It's simple, but it's still taken our time. We've, 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 we've showered love and attention on the foot there. Now we're going to put the roofs on. I'm going to start from the back. Look at that. Um, serial thing again. Cut out nicely. Nothing could be simpler. I'm going to place some glue on the top here, like this. That's all we need because all we're going to do here. There's no flaps involved with this roof because it just sits on top. A lot, uh, most of the roofs on Al's products sit on top, which is really handy. Watch this. <laughs> hey, jobs are good. It may spring up a little, so hold it down for a while. That's all. Don't worry about that. Let's get the next one on. Let's see if it's bending this way a bit as it sometimes does when you've glued something on just give it a little tweak this way so we don't want it tweaking up we want it tweaking down so just a little tweak you see what might happen it just tweaks up a little bit now let's move on to this next one again you can take as long or short term as you want with this just sticking this next one on like that stick a little bit of glue along the ridge here so then that here we go look at that fantastic now what I like to do here definitely is just hold it together for two or three minutes to do the trick seriously that's all just show a little bit of patience just remember Rome wasn't built in a day but this shed certainly was like that one yeah, now look at that, that's just coming together lovely. And we repeat the trick all the way down the bit thing, you see? So, I'll just put this one on. And then I won't bore you with finishing off, but we'll have a look when it's done. Again, so the same thing, if you really want, you can, to firm it up further, just place a little bit of glue on the bottom of the roof, which is going to sit against that that bit of roof there with its venti window and there we go you see it look oh I just love it it's fantastic look at all the moss and everything on the roofs oh it's so beautiful and look where you're going to stick your vents later right there 
that um, it's quite clear where they go. There's sort of little bits of, um, you know, muck and all that sort of thing. And what I love about Al's buildings is you get the warts and all. They don't look like they were built yesterday, do they? These, these, um, whoever designs these uh, has a real eye for detail. There's detail and then there's an eye for detail. I've shown you how to do the simple um, the, how, to, how to do it in the most fundamental way, how to make these structures in the most fundamental way. Now I'm interested in really bringing them to life. Uh, now this is going to take a whole another level of concentration and focus, um, but more fun in spades. Now we look at this now. Now let's get a proper look at this here. Now this is... Look at that, that's, that's going to take some wear and tear. Can we see that, all the relief? Here you can even see some of the windows are broken. Oh, I like that. Look at all the relief on the, uh, what's it called here? There's many levels. Here, let's, let's go around to the back, you see? Beautiful. Now this is all very, very simple stuff, if you follow my um, examples. Now, I'm going to start off just by showing how to take the windows back um, like in this structure here we're just interested here in taking the windows back the window and the door okay you see that but I'm gonna do it with this rail shed that we've been thinking that we've been working with so here we are here's the flat template I'm gonna cut out ever so nice and neatly the windows I won't bother doing all of them for you, just focus on this first one here, okay? So, you're going to have to look closer at this. What I'm going to do is just simply chop him out, but ever so neatly, ever so neatly on my chopping board. Don't be doing this on your mum's best maple table. So there we go, right, first chop, lovely, down there. So that's the first chop. I'm now going to chop round this curve. This takes a steady hand, but I'm sure humans of your calibre will be able to easily manage this. So I'm just holding it firm with my hand and then chopping ever so nicely round that curve. Don't worry if you go over the edge a little bit. That won't show at all. Moving the structure around right up to the edge of the window and take the knife up very slowly, very carefully. You don't want to move into the window. So you're keeping it nice and neat. Here we go. Let's chop him along the top of the sill. So that's all four sides chopped. Hey presto. Out falls the window. And there's your hole. Okay. Your next step is to take the window. Get a thin piece of card. Like that. Not just flimsy paper, it doesn't have to be very, very strong card, not even as strong as um, your old uh, cereal boxes there, just a piece of card, and simply glue said window there. Bit of glue, get a window, smeary monzo is nice, there you go, he's chopped out, that's what you do, we'll come to how we work with him later. What I like to do, because it's all part of my, well, I like to, you know, it's all part of my illness really, I like to then label it, number one, so as I know which one it's going to go in, okay? Number one. And then I move along all the windows, chopping them all out, like so, so that we've got holes where all the windows should be, okay? Okay, um, on this, I'm going to, I've just realised I need to show you how to chop out the round window. It's a round window, so obviously there's no ruler involved. Very daintily, get a sharp blade on your chopping board and just in little sections, swivel the thing round. Oh, it won't be perfect, but it'll be near as damn it. Um, oh, lovely. And I do love the whole process. Every little bit of it. When I'm building one of our structures in this manner, 
No, I'll get up on a Sunday morning and I'll start doing it on a Sunday morning. Let's face it, it's going to take me best part of the day. All day, you may say, compared to the flat one, a few couple of hours. But on Monday morning, whatever way you all sit, the next day you're either going to have this or you're going to have the flat one. So it doesn't matter if it takes all day. What's a day out of your life? A day having fun, modelling, huh, blimey. Get with the pink baggy, pop him out, and that's your hole again, you see? Stick him on your little bit of card here, same way. Just a little dab of glue. Have a little rag, always have a rag. Rags are very important to wipe the glue off your um, tools and that. Matron. And, and there's your little round one. And so you go with all your, all your windows until you've got them all cemented nicely onto your card. Right, okay, so I'm just gonna concentrate on these two windows. You'll have done all the others, but yeah, just for, to keep it simple, we're just going to concentrate on these two. I've got myself a piece of card. Now, it depends how far you want the windows to sit back. You can do it on your cereal boxes, but they will only sit back, what's that, three quarters of a mil, something like that. I like to use slightly more robust card for this. Um, so I've got something that is, look at that, that's a good two mil fat, so it's proper thing. It's like a wall. It'll just be that little more realistic. Cereal packet's fine, but there's better. Okay, so I'm going to place my wall on my card. I want to secure it, so just around the edges here. You'll see why in a minute. It's um, another nice little tip. So it's secure now, it's not moving around on there, because I want to draw like almost like a stencil, yeah? I want to draw the shape of the window on the card. You see, now if it's not secure, this is going to be moving all over the place. And it won't be accurate. So that's one. See that? That's going to be cut out later. I'm going to do my little round one here, see? With a pencil, just that. And then when you've gone all the way along, just gently very gently. Look at that, very gently. Take the old cellar tape off and there you go. Spot the seamless edit. Did you hear the phone? Wasn't important anyway, never is. In fact, that's a good tip. When you're doing this sort of thing, don't answer the phone. That's no, this is much, much more important. Okay, so we'll take the lid, take him off, and there we go. It's quite clearly where our shapes are. They're going to correspond to the holes in our building. So now I have to chop these areas out. So I'm going to do that in the same way as I chopped the windows out in the first place. So let's do this now. So down there. You can go quite a way over your mark because it's going to be behind the scenery here. So there we go. This I always find as one of my most satisfying parts of the modelling. I love cutting these crunchy bits out and you know that very shortly you're going to get a result. Now obviously chopping around a curve on quite thick card is not that easy so once again controlled power Oh, how, re how rewarding is that? Look at that, it's just beautiful. It's even better when you get to put your, what's it called? And now I'm gonna cut round my circle. Again, not the easiest, try to get through in one, even though it's quite fat, but don't. So I'm going, I'm getting through the card in one cut, but only in sections around the circle. There we are, like this. Bish bash bosh, and lovely, look at that. Oh. Now what I quite like to do, I'm not gonna bother here, I quite like to get a little bit of 
That's come out really quite smooth, hasn't it? Nicely done. Nice job. I quite like to get a little bit of sandpaper sometimes on my finger and just, you know, smooth it out. But that's re if you really want to go the extra mile. I'm not even going to bother today. Now, here we go. Now let's put this over there. And now you see? Perfect. And what you've then got is this relief here sits back. So I'm going to now stick, imagine that you've got all the other windows relieved. Well, only, as I say, we're only working on these two. Thank you, that's my dog. Um, I'm now going to give a bit of an outline on here as to where I want to be putting my um, glue. So it's sort of, if we just draw this sort of area here, it's in this area, okay? So here we go. Let's glue it on nice and get it nice and tight up to the edges. Nice and tight, nice and tight. Up to the edges, look. Yeah, all the way along. Lovely. This stuff doesn't go off for a few minutes, so it's not a race. Um, so do it nicely. Get it right the way around. You don't want lots of air bubbles popping up under your under the um, in the paper between the, your paper and your card, which can happen if you don't cover the whole area properly. Okay? Imagine that we've got all the other holes here. This is another, it's like muck spreading, isn't it? Look at that. It's just great. Look at that. Get the glue on. Don't spare your what's it called. Get the glue on. Lovely job. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, I'm nearly there. Spread it out nicely. Yeah, with your special tool here. I'll just use the end of a paintbrush. Just any old rubbishy old paintbrush that you can get again from any old pound shop because you're going to do a little bit of splash from some colour on later. That's perfect. Sit him on right nicely over all the holes. Can you see that? Spread him down gently with your hands nicely. Get your weighty tomes that we spoke about already and squash them flat -ums for later okay right now I'm ready to move on to the next stage which is putting my windows behind but first of all what I really want to do is I don't really want this white you see the inside of the wall there that's the white of the card what I really don't want if we look here is it's not white it's the color ish you're never going to get it exactly, but it's the colour of the brickwork. So what I'm going to do, I've just got old cheap paint here um, that you can again just get, I don't know, you can use felt pens, you can use um, those children's paints you get from the, what's it called, just get a brand from the pound shop again, very cheap, get a little palette, I just will use something like this, so just a, a, any old piece of card, there's a little bit of paint. What I'm going to do with my brush, just... This is a watercolour, so I'm just going to, there we are, and I'm just going to paint, can you see that? The insides, like that, isn't that nice? I'm just going to go all the way around, whatever colour the wall is, you correspond your colour to that. Um, but yeah, don't really worry too much. I've got a bit on the wall, doesn't matter, wipe it off. Um, you don't have to worry too much about getting an exact match. All you want to do is just take that white gleam away. Um, it's very important. I just stuck my brush in my coffee. Yeah, and tell you what, after six o'clock, it goes in my wine a lot more than it goes in my coffee. But there we go, that's another story. Look at that, beautiful. And now, it sort of sits so much nicer. I'm going to do the same with my round one. I really like doing this. I've just got all the little touches, all the little sections. You know, because you know it's going to be worth it. You just know I'm going to get this love gone over the edge again a little bit there. Don't worry. Remember, you know, there will be some rough edges, but this is an old loco shed. It's a building, you know, it will have its rough edges. It'll be all the more organic for it. Um, you know, you'll impress your buddies so much more. And the more you get into this, look at this, I'm deliberately taking a nice bit of time to do this. 
Why rush it? Why rush such a lovely thing? Fantastic. Okay, now, here's my very favourite bit. And now, I'm going to stick my windows in. But before I do that, here's one of my windows. Here's the one. I want to have a broken window. So this is if you want a broken window. Take my knife and just simply chop out one or half of one of the panes. I'm going to do a whole one here, like that. And that just gives you even more relief. It's like relief within relief. It's fantastic. So you've got a broken window, you see that? I'm just going to then put my brush in there, get a bit of paint on there, a little bit of dark. Again, an old felt pen or something, just to, to take the white off. Okay, lovely. This window is now going to fit in this hole. But you're not going to put it in, you're going to come at it from behind. So, I'm now going to chop my window out, but leaving plenty of overlap. because that's what's going to glue to the inside of the building. So I now turn my building over, my wall over, apply the glue around the hole here, okay, around this hole, like this, again with my trusty old stick, a little bit of glue around there, nice, lovely jobby, and a little bit. Just make sure, put the old stick back on the rack, turn it round, take my window, place the window on your cutting board, move everything aside. I mean, I'm terribly messy when I do this sort of thing. I mean, look, look, so, so, it's a mess. And then just gently place the building onto your window, press down nicely, maybe turn round to then push him down at the sides to secure him. Very nice, you'll get a bit gluey, but you get gluey. You know, tomorrow morning, you'll be nice and clean, you'll have a lovely bit. And now we see, I just stuck a little bit of, now we see, that's the difference. You've got your setback window and your non-setback window. Wasn't that fun? Do you see that? You got that? I'm coming closer to you. How's that? Now you can see one from the other. Hey, eh? brilliant. Same, I'm just going to stick my little white one in, little, little round one in, it's the same. Okay, spot the seamless edit. I just want to make doubly sure that you can see the relief. So I've got it going with the light. So I'm going to lift it up and as I push it this way, can you see that? Now you can really pick it. Now, you know, when the light's streaming in onto your set, you will, onto your layout, you will pick these out and it will give such a difference, I promise you. And you decide on what level of relief you want to do and we'll have a little look at that later. I'm just going to stick the little round window in, it's going to go in there. See? Oops, got my finger caught. And then just, just to reiterate, so it's a little round one, cut them out again, flaps around the side. See, like that. Turn the old structure over, like this. Get the what's it called? And then we'll hold him up to the light again. So you can see the two, the more of these you do, the more effective it becomes, obviously. Turn it over again, pop my little round window, place, get it nice and straight, nice and straight, nice and straight. There we go, lovely job. I'm just going to firm him down this way. And now I'm going to lift him up again, nice and slowly. So we go through the, what's it called? Now you see that, that's two down, however many to go. Fantastic, eh? Brilliant. Good. Okay, so we've looked at the windows. Now let's get back to the original. It's up to you what level. Of relief if you're you know if you've picked up on that on the window relief then the rest becomes obvious you can see that this this part of the wall is now out and so this part is set back within the the, the windows within this part of the wall are set back also so let me just show you quickly so you'd start off with this type of 
structure here, you see. Your windows, you'll put your round windows, you'd put in just behind there straight away. But what I've done is chopped out the middle part, as you can see here, like, very much like chopping out the window in the first place. And when I put this in, I've put the windows just like I did in the outer wall to begin with. But now I will then, let's actually do this. I'm now going to turn this over, put my glue around the edge, just like I did with the windows, same thing. It does take a little bit of figuring out this, but this is part of the fun. Once you figure it out, which this video will go a long way to helping you, you'll have so much more fun with this product and we stick him on like that oh look I've forgotten to do ah now this is good because it shows you if you forget to um, do the painting of the inside of the wall like I showed you with the windows what you'll get is can you see that you'll get your white line inside can you see that? Just there. You don't want that, do you? I'll just look through the window. You don't want that. So don't do that. But I mean, that's how you do it. Look at that. So you've got all your levels of relief there. Hasn't quite glued yet. See that? Brilliant. And then, do you know, you can do things like, well, what's wrong with, I don't know, just something off the top of my head. Painting one of these black, shoving it down there, there's your drain pipe. You know, you can add all sorts of things to it. Get a little bit of um, moss or something and attach it to the side of the, I don't know why I didn't think of the drain pipe thing with this one. Great, wouldn't it? One, two, three, there's another level of relief. Absolutely fantastic. You can have so much fun with it. Once you get involved in these these models the world is your lobster okay brilliant well i've enjoyed sharing that with you and i'll see you again sometime okay brilliant have fun